Hello, today I'm going to show you how to do practice problem 13.2 from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. Now I'm going to modify the circuit to take into account the mutually induced voltages. I need to pay attention to the polarity only on the right side of the circuit, where I can label it plus minus, plus minus, and then plus minus. Once I have a pair with the dot and the plus, I circle them and I pass that plus to the opposite side of the circuit. I then place the positive with the dot and a negative on the opposite side. I pair the two together. I shift them to the right, and that is going to be the polarity of my dependent voltage source. Now it's going to be J3 of I2 minus I1. Now let's do the other side. I'm only going to pay attention to the left side of the circuit. I'm going to label the polarity of the resistor plus minus, plus minus, pair the plus and the dot together, carry the plus sign over to the other dot, plus minus, pair the two together, and then shift it down. And that's going to be the polarity of my dependent voltage source. The dependent voltage source is going to be J3 of I1. Here I've redrawn the circuit so it's easier for you to see. Now we're going to need to perform a KVL at loop 1. And we'll be starting at the source. So we'll get negative 100, angle 60 degrees, plus 5 of I1, plus J2 of I1, plus J3 of I2 minus I1, plus J6 of I1 minus I2. And then finally, minus J3 of I1. Now we can simplify this. We're going to get I1 times 5 plus J2 minus J3 plus J6 minus J3 plus I2 times J3 minus J6. This is all going to be equal to 100 angle 60 degrees. Now we can simplify that further by writing it as 5 plus J2 all times I1 minus J3 times I2. And this is all equal to 100 angle 60 degrees. Now we're going to need to perform a KVL at loop 2. So we're looking at the right side and we're going to start at the capacitor. Negative J4 I2 plus J3 I1 plus J6 times I2 minus I1, and that's equal to 0. We can simplify that further by writing J3 minus J6 times I1 plus J6 minus J4 times I2 is equal to 0. This simplifies to J2 times I2 is equal to J3 I1 and we can simplify this to I2 is equal to 1.5 I1. I've now rewritten the two equations for you to see. 
As you can see here, we have two equations and two unknowns. I'm going to substitute the I2 equation into the first equation. So we're going to get 5 plus J2 times I1 minus J3 times 1.5 I1 is equal to 100 angle 60 degrees. We can simplify that further by writing 5 plus J2 times I1 minus J 4.5 I1 is equal to 100 angle 60 degrees. This can be simplified further and be written as I1 is equal to 100 angle 60 degrees divided by 5 minus J of 2.5. We now need to convert the rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates using the equation r equals square root of x squared plus y squared, where x is 5 and y is 2.5. This is going to give us 5.59. We also need to solve for the angle, where theta is equal to the inverse tan of negative 2.5 divided by 5. This is going to give us negative 26 0.56 degrees. Written out in polar form, it's going to be 5.59 angle negative 26.56 degrees. We can now rewrite this into the original I1 equation as 100 angle 60 degrees divided by 5.59 angle negative 26.56 degrees. This will be simplified down to equal 17.889 angle 86.56 degrees. We now have I1, and if we recall from above, we found that I2 is equal to 1.5 I1. So with I1, we can solve for I2. So we get I2 is equal to 1.5 times 17.889 times, or 86.56 degrees. This I2 is going to be equal to 26.83 angle 86.56 degrees, and of course the units are going to be amps. There's our I2. And there's our I1.